The first concept that we are going to go over the DNA and RNA, so gene expression. The first thing that we need to know are the Shafgar rules. The Shafgar rules are where adenine and thymine are paired together and guanine and cytosine are also paired together. So a good memory trick to remember this would be that always together, gray combo, or apples to trees and cars and garages. Okay, so those are the Shafgar rules. Also, make sure you know that thymine makes up that 15%. So using that pairing rule to calculate the other bases. So if, if T or thymine is 15%, adenine would also be 15% because they are both together, right? And then guanine and cytosine would make that additional 70%. Some historical experiments and discovery. So we have Hershey and Chase, that experiment specifically. So think of the little claw whenever you think of Hershey and Chase. Hershey and Chase experiment basically demonstrated that bacterial phages, so these are viruses that end up affecting bacteria, they inject only their DNA into that host, okay? We also have Rosalind Franklin. So remember, this was Rosalind Franklin. She ended up um, using x-ray crystallography to identify those physical characteristics of DNA. She ended up sharing a lot of her um, contributions to Watson and Crick and other scientists, and she didn't mind sharing all her information. And she ended up dying early age um, due to um, ovarian cancer, due to all of that x-rays. Um, so, uh, and she never got that Nobel Prize, so we're, we're really sad about her. Um, and then we have Watson and Crick. So Watson and Crick, they did not um, discover the DNA, but what they did, they discovered that DNA, uh, they structured that, DNA, that double helix structure. So that DNA structure, they were the first ones who made that model, okay? Um, now we have DNA versus RNA. So... What I want you to remember is that RNA uses that uracil, okay? So going back to our bases, um, so with RNA, instead of thymine, it uses uracil. So going back to our Shafgar rules, we have adenine goes with thymine, guanine goes with cytosine. So for RNA, they, instead of that thymine, it's going to have a U. So one of the things to keep in mind is, or to remember, is that DNA is that double-stranded helix, and RNA is single-stranded. So DNA dances in doubles, and RNA raves solo, okay? Human karyotypes. So karyotyping, um, when we think of that, think about as an x-ray, an x-ray that shows um, images of your chromosomes, okay? So humans have 46 chromosomes in total. So this goes to 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes, one pair of sex chromosomes. So for females, it will be XX, and for male would be XY. So an easy mnemonic to think of this is that XX for she and X, Y for he, okay? Another key thing to remember is that Down syndrome is trisomy 21. So there's three copies of that chromosome 21, okay? All right, now we have chromosomes. So the way this goes, it's from DNA, chromosomes, and then we have sister chromatids. Okay, so histones are histones over here. These buddies, what they end up doing, they help the um, proteins to uh, proteins DNA. So it helps it wrap around and, and make that uh, DNA structure. So histones help uh, chromosomes. So they wrap around chromosomes. So think of a, a birthday present or a Christmas present. You're wrapping around it to make the big DNA. <laughs> Now we have diploid cells. So diploid, think of that prefix di. Di is two, right? Diploid cells, they have two sets of chromosomes. So chromosomes, remember in our human body, we have 46. So there's two sets of those. Haploid cells, think of haploid for half of the cells or half of the number. So that would be 23 chromosomes. 
Now we moving on to mutations. So mutations, they are permanent changes in DNA. So an example to remember this would be that mutations make DNA mistakes permanent. So these are permanent changes in DNA. So um, if there's a question that asks you, um, are mutations permanent changes? Yes, they are, because they are permanent. So mutations, permanent changes. Um, there's three different types of mutations. So the first one would be base pair substitution. Okay, so substitute. So think of um, you're playing in a football field or you're playing soccer and they're making a sub. So they're like sub coach or a ref. We have a sub. So they move, you know, number 13 to number 12. So they're so for here in our uh, mutation, they're moving these these um, pairings. So thinking back. So this would be an RNA sample, right? Because it has that U. So in this RNA strip, we are moving or we're moving these base pairs. So we have C, U, U, G, A, G, and then we move it to C, U, U, G, U, G. So they have swapped out or they have subbed that A to a U, okay? So that is one example, that base pair substitution. Then we have insertion. So think of insertion, you're inputting or you're putting in an extra nucleotide. So you're inputting, you're putting something else in there, right? Deletion, so this is the same thing, you're deleting, so control alt delete or you're deleting a part. So this would be your before that deletion and then you delete that area. So that would be after the deletion, okay? Now we have DNA replication and transcription. So DNA replication is a semi-conservative process, okay? DNA replication is a, a semi-conservative process and it uses a primer to start. So think about, um, you know, you're wanting to paint your, your walls and how do you start doing that? You have to start with a primer, right? So you go to Home Depot, you get a primer. Or um, when you're gonna do your nails, you need a primer to do to put that top coat on, right? So that's how you will start. So you need a primer for this. So the same thing with DNA replication, you need that primer to, and it goes through to, to start that, that process. Then we have RNA polymerase. Um, this transcribes DNA into mRNA. So a good mnemonic to think about this would be polymerase produces RNA, okay? Now we have codons and anticodons. So a codon is a three base sequence on, on mRNA. An anticodon, it matches that codon on tRNA delivering that amino acid, okay? So think of mRNA codes or codes that message. So our mRNA is our messenger. So they're like, hey, you know, this person needs um, X, Y, Z, right? tRNA it is our traveler, okay? So they deliver, they travel to deliver that package or whatever you need, okay? So mRNA is our messenger and tRNA is our traveler or our person that um, transcribes that message, right? Now cell division. With mitosis, so mitosis, again, it produces two diploid cells, okay? So the stages for mitosis is IP mat. So you can think of IP mat. I will be making another video that explains a little bit more on what is going on in mitosis, okay? And I have another memory trick um, there. And if you would like to watch that video, you can. Um, so IP mat, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, okay? Um, and then cytokinesis. Um, so um, just think of I prepare middle part apart too, or IP mat. Okay. Meiosis that produces two haploid cells. So here's our here are two examples. You have your meiosis, so it has those four cells. Mitosis too. Okay. Um, and then meiosis it produces those four haploid cells and 
also has non-disjunction. So non-disjunction is where the chromosomes fail to separate separate properly. Okay, so if they're junk, their junction, they're separating correctly, non-disjunction, they're not able to. So N for not able to separate properly. Okay. Crossing over. So this occurs in meiosis for genetic variation. Okay. Genetic inheritance. So we have our dominant, which is going to be our capital letter. Okay, so dominant for and this is the one that dominates the situation here. So that's going to be our capital letter. And then we have recessive. So our recessive is going to be our lowercase letter. Okay, so an example here, A would be um, the capital letter A would have the dominant and the lowercase letter would be recessive. So dominant is big, recessive is small. Uh, genotype to phenotype. So the genes determine the physical characteristics. So a little memory trick here is that your genes tell you about your physical characteristics. So how you, what type of jeans you wear shows you the type of style you have. Uh, not really, but um, in this example, hopefully this kind of helps you remember this. So your genes determine your physical characteristics, okay? Monohybrid cross. So an example would be capital P, lowercase p, or dominant P, recessive P. So that would be a ratio of three over one, okay? So this, um, that would be that ratio. So it will be a dominant to recessive because three is bigger than one. A polygenic trait example would be height, okay? And here are some key vocabulary to remember. So our histone, remember our histone wraps around, um, there's that protein DNA that wraps around Oncogene, so an oncogene is a gene that turns normal cells into tumor cells. So onco, so think of oncology. So that is all going to be uh, tumor related, right? Um, interphase, so our interphase, so that is our first phase in mitosis. So this is the longest phase um, and it prepares for division. Um, hydrogen bonds, so hydrogen bonds, they hold nitrogenous bases together, okay? So think of holding hydrogen bonds, hold everything together, okay? And then tRNA is our traveling agent. So tRNA delivers those amino acids to those ribosomes. And that is all for this. If you have any um, questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.